in 1 Thessalonians 4:16, 17, it talks about how the Lord himself will come down from heaven. It's not going to be an ambassador, representative, or angel. It'll be the Lord himself. It'll be a magnificent day, and he won't come quietly. There will be a shout, a shout that will wake the dead, shake the earth's foundations, and with the voice of the archangel and the trumpet of God, calling his children to him. Then, those of us who are still alive will join the ones who have passed away and will all meet the Lord in the air. From that moment on, we'll always be with the Lord. We'll be lifted up, my friends. This world, with all its sin and sadness, won't be our home anymore. This world filled with death and pain won't be our home anymore. We'll finally leave behind this world of sin and sadness. This world, with all its darkness and wrongdoing, won't be where we belong anymore. We'll meet the Lord in the air and be with him forever. This isn't just a story. It's the truth from God, as certain as the sun rising. We're living in dangerous times when most people have nothing to hope for beyond today. Many people only live for this life because they think it's all there is. But for those who have faith in the Lord, Jesus Christ, there's a hope that goes beyond death. So I ask you today, are you ready? Are you ready for that shout? Are you ready to meet the Lord in the air? If the trumpet were to sound right now, would you be taken up or left behind? What if the rapture happened today? Do you have peace in your heart about it? Wherever you are, you can stop and pray to your Heavenly Father. Find assurance in Christ Jesus that if the rapture happened right now, you would be taken up. What an amazing day the rapture will be. To see Christians who died in Christ rise before you, some who look like they lived a hundred years ago, others who look like they lived 300 years ago, and still others who look like they lived a thousand years ago, all rising up. And then it'll be your turn to be taken up from this earth. In the blink of an eye, you'll be changed. In the blink of an eye, you'll be transformed. In the blink of an eye, you'll have a wonderful, glorious body. Look forward to the rapture. If you feel uneasy about it, I encourage you to stop this video and talk to your Heavenly Father. Pour out your heart to Him and try to understand why you feel uneasy about the rapture. The rapture is something we should eagerly anticipate to be with Jesus forever. Sometimes in movies, they show people who have died and gone to heaven wanting to come back to earth. But that's not true. Believe me, those who are with the Lord in heaven don't want to return to this earth. Honestly, I understand why they wouldn't want to come back. Why would anyone want to return to a world filled with suffering, sorrow, worry, and anxiety? Those in heaven are in eternal bliss. They have a peace that's beyond our understanding, a peace that only comes from God. They have no desire to return to this world. And trust me, when you get to heaven, you won't want to come back either. Oh, heaven. When the rapture comes, saints like you and me will be taken to be with the Lord in heaven. Look forward to it. In heaven, there will be no fear of the future, no fear of tomorrow, no fear of tomorrow, no fear of things like rising interest rates or inflation, no fear of mortgage payments or rent increases. In heaven, you'll think to yourself, I'm here. Just take a moment, close your eyes, and try to imagine how it will feel to know you've made it to heaven, and that feeling will last for all eternity. Our imaginations can't even fully grasp how amazing that will be. When you open your eyes and see the eternal bliss of heaven, you'll thank God for accepting the free gift of salvation. You'll thank God for what Jesus did for you on the cross. You'll thank God for choosing to walk the narrow path instead of the broad road that leads to destruction. Look forward to the rapture. 
I've preached in the past about what it might be like just moments before the rapture. When I was young in my faith, I used to imagine that ten minutes before the rapture, the sky would darken, the sun would cast an apocalyptic glow, and the wind would start to howl. A great meteor shower would light up the skies, and everyone would look up, knowing something significant was about to happen. There would be a powerful earthquake, shaking the very foundations of the earth, and the waves would roar. Lightning would flash uncontrollably. I also mentioned how some people think they can live however they want, and then change their lives right before the rapture. But how can you know when it will happen? That's why it's crucial to live each day as if Jesus could call your name in the clouds at any moment. We don't know when the rapture will happen. There won't be a notification on your phone giving you a 10-minute warning. It will catch you by surprise. You'll be where you usually are. If you spend your time doing things, you shouldn't. You'll be there. If you're faithful in going to church or prayer meetings, you'll be there too. Today, I want to talk not about what happens 10 minutes before the rapture, but 10 minutes after. I pray that everyone listening will be in the presence of the Lord by then. But the truth is, not everyone will be, even now, as I speak. Not everyone listening is with the Lord. For a moment, let's think about two groups of people and the fear and regret they'll experience 10 minutes after the rapture. The first group is made up of Christians in name only. They claim to follow Christ, but haven't truly believed in Him. They go to church, but they've never been spiritually reborn. Their minds may be filled with knowledge, but their hearts are far from God. Imagine how they'll feel knowing the rapture happened, but they weren't taken up. Now, consider the second group. Those who don't believe in God or follow other religions. When they see their loved ones, who are true followers of Jesus, gone, they'll realize they were wrong. I'm sure there will be a church service like no other after the saints are caught up. Even those in the world who thought Christians were crazy for talking about the rapture. We'll see they were right. It's similar to how people viewed Noah as crazy when he warned them about the flood. They mocked him until it was too late. How many people were saved in Noah's time when the flood came? Only eight. Think about it. Out of all the millions of people on earth, just eight made it into the ark. Not even one of the world's population was saved. So, my friend, how many do you think will be saved when the rapture happens? Some people feel afraid or anxious about the rapture because they're not sure if they'll be caught up. They worry they'll end up like the first group I mentioned. But let me tell you, the rapture is something you should eagerly anticipate. Don't fear whether you're saved or not. If you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Salvation comes by grace through faith. It's a gift from God. Salvation is a gift from God, not something earned by our actions. So we can't boast about it. You can know you're saved because the Spirit confirms it within you. Your life changes and continues to change. You become less like your old self and more like a disciple of Jesus. So, don't be afraid of the rapture. Look forward to it. How could you not look forward to it? How could you not anticipate heaven? Let me be honest for a moment. This world is a mess. Joy doesn't last here. And life has a way of surprising us in unpleasant ways. Everything in this world is broken and nothing lasts forever. Even the most beautiful marriages end in death, leaving one partner heartbroken. But when the Lord Jesus comes and takes his church, there will be no more death. Just imagine living without death. Look forward to the rapture, because after it, there will be no more death. I've seen families weep, real grief, real pain, 
when they lose someone dear to them. As pastors, we witness this sorrow firsthand, but after the rapture, that sorrow will be no more. But I urge you to look forward to the rapture. Anticipate the coming of the Lord. At any moment, Jesus could call out our names and will leave this world behind. Look forward to it, my friend, because when he comes, all your sorrows will end forever. When he comes, you'll never have to worry about your health again. Sickness has plagued humanity for so long. Even if you're young and healthy, illness can strike at any moment. But in an instant, all sickness will be gone. In 1 Corinthians 15, 50, 1 52, it says, Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, and in 1 Thessalonians 4, 16, 17, it says, For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a cry of command, with the voice of an archangel, and with the sound of the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Jesus himself promised, I will come again and take you to myself, that where I am, you may be also. The rapture doesn't have a set date. It will be the most sudden event ever experienced on earth. It will happen in the blink of an eye. The trumpet will sound, and the dead in Christ will rise with glorified bodies, and those of us still alive will join them, meeting the Lord in the sky. For a child of God, the grave is not the end. It's just a waiting place. And for those of us still walking this earth, we're waiting too.